Hi, my name is Viktor Örvan. I'm professor in electronics and dean of engineering at Lund University. I decided to title my talk, Digital Architectures Know Your Algorithm, since I think it's crucial to make efficient hardware solutions, you need to know your algorithm. I've decided to concentrate on wireless technology since I've been working on that throughout my career. But you could apply it to a lot of different things. If we look at wireless technology, I decided to start in second generation in the early 90s, where we mainly designed FIR filters, passing over through OFDM, and then going to MIMO solutions, multiple antenna system. And today we see the launching of 5G, where massive MIMO is one key technology. At the same time as we have seen the complexity increase in the algorithms, we have also seen different design considerations. Then when I started, early 90s, it was more or less focused on operations per second. That is number crunching. Then as we went further, we started to have things like configurability and scalability that became important. Today we see a shift again where data transfers and memory organization is one crucial parameter. It's not that the other things has disappeared, but this is becoming more and more important. And the design methodologies has also changed. We have gone from more or less custom design over hardware description language to high level synthesis C, C++, System C, and now Shizzle that we heard Bora Nikolic talk about uh, yesterday. We, of course, have then Moore's Law in the background of it all. So I said, know your algorithms and also know your technology. So I think what we have to design is hardware-friendly algorithms. An algorithm that works in MATLAB doesn't necessarily make a good implementation. So we have to exploit system opportunities. We have to trade off complexity and performance. We have to make tailored architectures. I still believe that it, things cannot be solved by only processors. So we, and we may have to make the architectures configurable and be able to adapt, in the wireless case, to channel conditions. And if we use advanced CMOS technology, we have to use the options that the technology brings. So we have to also know our technology. And the key message is, as a circuit designer, I cannot, of course, know everything myself. So when I say know your algorithm, you should cooperate with people that are expert in algorithm uh, development and technology people. So some examples. When I many years ago, I call this surfing the channel, adapt to channel conditions. And this is an adapted UMTS filter. So when we designed that, we said we need a minimum of 3 dB attenuation in the stop band. That's a 3 GPP specification. That requires a filter length of 65 taps in an FIR filter but that is in a bad channel. If we then have a good channel, we can show that we only need five taps. So of course, then we have to make a hardware architecture that is flexible, can measure the signal to noise ratio and switch between five to 65 taps in steps. And this has to do be done efficiently. So the overhead to measuring SNR and controlling the number of taps cannot give too much overhead. This was done more than 10 years ago. Then later came MIMO technology, multiple input, multiple output, that is multiple antenna systems. And this is an example that Mike Faulkner from U Victoria University in Australia, when he was at the PhD defense in Lund in 2005. He said, if we now look at 802.11n, that was hot at that moment in time. You said, what antenna configurations do you have? What modulation scheme, number of subchannels, and see if we want to do optimal detection, that is maximum likelihood, we would need a huge amount of points, 10 to the power of 17 we see here. And at that time, in that DSP technology, 
we need a 10 to the power of eight processors. Or if Moore's law kicks in, Mike said we have to wait 40 years. But we cannot wait 40 years. And then why do we need to do maximum likelihood detection? You can do other things. If you know your algorithms, we can see that we can achieve almost the same bit error rate performance with algorithms that have considerably lower computational count by several orders of magnitude. So we don't want to do maximum likelihood. We'll do something simpler and achieve this more or less the same performance. But if we are in a wireless area, we know we have a wireless channel that changes all the time. We also have different quality of service requirements depending on what we do. Sometimes we need high data rates. Sometimes we need low latency. We need reliability. So then we can adapt our system to use different algorithms depending on the channel and depending on the quality of service. And what you see there, we can use different detection algorithms. We can use different MIMO technologies. We can tweak the number of antennas or change the modulation. So we need a reconfigurable architectures that can go between those different blocks. And we need to be able to shut them off when we don't use them, otherwise we use too much energy. So we have worked a lot on link adaptivity. That is, again, surfing the channels. Know your channels. Today, we are into the next step. Massive MIMO, a target technology for the fifth generation wireless. In Massive MIMO, we have a huge numbers of antennas at the base station. Huge number is in the hundreds, at least. But we have simple terminals with single antenna or maybe two antennas. And we focus the energy to exactly the user we want. That means we can get a very high spectrum efficiency and we can actually reduce the power consumption a lot. This is our test bed for Massive MIMO we have designed in Lund together with National Instruments. It's a test bed for proof of concept and evaluation of the algorithm. It has 100 base station antennas serving 12 users in the current setup. It weighs 350 kilos and takes 2.5 kilowatts. So we know that is nothing we will implement uh, for in practical use, but it's proof of concept. But we can look at the challenges we have. We need a very high computational complexity. We, have, we need a low latency. We need large data storage, and not the lead. It's very complicated data shuffling to be able to combine the data from all the antennas and process that together. It cannot be processed per antenna. So this is our first massive MIMO chip that was presented at ISSCC in, in last year in 2017. It's made for 128 times eight massive MIMO, one square millimeter and 55 milliwatts power consumption, we can compare it to our test bed. So we see and see our, my pyramid here. We design hardware friendly algorithm to exploit massive MIMO features, linear and approximate processing. We need it to be configurable and scalable and make it tailored architectures with vector computing on a systolic array. And we use the technology and use the body biasing and the FTSY technology. This is our second massive MIMO ship that we did together with University of Michigan that was presented at ISSEC this year. It provides 3 db gain at similar cost. It has now an iterative decoding algorithm which enables runtime channel adaptation. And we see I use the same pyramid again. It has a condensed, more efficient systolic array with high error efficiency. And we have introduced coarse clock gating, supply scaling, and again, body biasing to be able to tune our performance. So those are two examples. And then we come to the last part. 
we have a different ballpark now. If you look at Shanghai 20 years ago, it's still a big city, but it is not like it is today. Compared to what we did 20 years ago when we mostly was number crunching, today we see traffic problems and parking problems. And we can compare that to in our field that data transfer is coming increasingly more important and data storage. So we have also designed a memory system to make, take away the burdens of this in massive MIMO. We exploit channel sparsity because the channel matrix is, is pretty sparse. So we compress channel data. We do near memory computing. And so we have online compression and we need to do smart data organization and have flexible memory accesses. This is crucial to make Massive MIMO uh, a competing technology. So in summary, I would say those are some ideas that are not limited to wireless technology. It could be used for image processing, machine learning, or whatever. But I would say you need to know your algorithm to make efficient hardware. Data transfer and storage are increasingly important today, and that will not go away. And we have new technologies all the time. We have to exploit technology options. You shouldn't always go for the best performance. You should go for log on performance or good enough performance. And it's very crucial. Cooperate, cooperate across boundaries and disciplines. I have always worked with people who understand the algorithms a lot better than me. And here I have some key references, and I will acknowledge my coworkers that have helped doing this work and this presentation. Thank you.